On this special edition of Frequency Matters, we have a guest in the studio, Suja Ramnath of Analog Devices. Suja, it's great to see you again. It's great to see you again, Gary. So tell us about your responsibilities at Analog Devices. Sure. My role is general manager for the transceivers organization. And uh, in, in my position, I'm responsible for the overall strategic direction as well as the uh, profit and loss for the, the product group. So at the International Microwave Symposium, you introduced Radioverse. Can you tell us what that is? Sure. Um, we're actually very excited with the introduction of Radioverse. Uh, Radioverse is the brand launch that we've done that represents not just the technology of the transceivers, but also the design environment that we're bringing forward to help our customers to be able to incorporate these products into their, uh, their end product themselves and really rapidly move to production. What we're finding is um, our customer base is changing. It's not the traditional RF engineer, if you will, that's taking our product and incorporating it within their, their different boards. As an example, within the UAV market, they tend to be more software-oriented engineers that are really looking uh, for someone to come in with a hardware solution that effectively simplifies what it is that they're trying to achieve. And that's really at the heart of Radioverse. It's the ability to take a very complicated um, product, effectively a system, if you will, and simplify it for our customers so that they can come to ADI, um, grab this you know, very advanced uh, technology and be able to very rapidly take the product from concept and move through prototyping into production. And within the Radioverse itself, at the core is the transceiver technology and products themselves. But we've also um, infused it with a lot of supporting collateral, both by way of hardware, um, such as evaluation boards, prototyping kits, um, as well as API for them to be able to fire the product up in their lab very, very quickly, all the way through uh, very robust documentation and uh, a, a lot of the thought leadership that ADI has built up over um, a, a vast amount of time to be able to really pull all these elements together and uh, bring forward to our customers a, a place where they can go to really simplify how they incorporate these products into their designs with the underlying uh, concept of helping enable them to move very, very quickly and get their product to market. And could you talk a little bit about the capabilities of the transceiver product family? Yes, the transceiver technology effectively um, is a, a high performance 65 nanometer CMOS device that allows you to go from RF to bits, if you will. It covers all that functionality. Um, highly integrated, high performance type of system. And what kind of uh, technology did it take to actually do this level of integration? Uh, what were some of the challenges that the design team faced? We're actually into the fourth generation of this particular product. Um, so we have well over 10 years worth of development and learning that's gone into it. From a challenges perspective, I would say the biggest challenge that the team faced uh, is really finding the right mix and balance between the architectural needs of what our customers' systems are demanding versus the trade-off of not having to compromise on power consumption or overall performance performance, bandwidth, really the, the technical capabilities of the part, and, and cost as well. Can you give us maybe an example or two of some applications where the Radioverse transceivers might be applied? Sure. Um, I would say one of the uh, early successes that the franchise experienced was with the AD9361. And this particular product has gained a lot of traction within the small cell application. Today, it's, it's uh, you know, shipping across various customers into you know, multiple geographies. Beyond the uh, comms market, this part has also gained a lot of traction within uh, wireless video type of applications, specifically UAVs, as an example. And beyond that, the product is applicable to uh, military radios, 5G test beds, and uh, other type of uh, applications, including test equipment, as an example, where you might want to um, transmit data wirelessly. So on the one hand, by doing all this integration into a single transceiver, you make it probably fairly easy for somebody to apply it. But on the other hand, given all the integration, 
it's probably more difficult because not any single designer has the full span to know how to apply it. So what kind of application support do you provide for someone that wants to to use this kind of functionality. Right. Gary, you, I, I think you you hit on one of the, the core elements of our uh, Transceiver franchise in terms of um, the delivery of the technology to our customer base. Through Radioverse, our customers are able to get, I think, a very wide range of application support, both in terms of um, the you know, robust documentation, evaluation boards, uh, software support, um, as well as an actual technical liaison that can effectively help them to design the product in. And they can connect to ADI through Engineer Zone, as an example, as a, a pathway into the organization to be able to tap into all these different elements of support that exist. What kind of response have you gotten from uh, from customers in the market given these announcements? It, it's actually been very exciting. The response has been overwhelmingly positive. Um, we see that both through direct interactions with our customers as well as just the amount of um, you know touches that we're getting um, after the IMS show. Our web traffic has uh, it's probably increased well over 15x. So mm. we're, we're very, very excited, and these are all unique visitors to our, our site. So in addition to servicing our traditional ADI customer base, Radioverse has allowed us to get reach into customers that we you know, are, would, would normally have not been able to service in the past. I was very impressed with just looking at sort of the block diagram and the fact of basically it's like a base station on a chip. It's amazing. It's, it's quite impressive, the level of integration and performance that the team has been able to achieve. And we're very excited to be able to bring it to the market. So as you look in the future without asking you to disclose your product roadmap, what kind of trends do you see that customers are asking for that uh, will take this technology to the next level? We continue to get requests from our customers for more integration. Um, and beyond just hardware integration, but also taking on the software responsibilities in many cases that their teams would normally endeavor to accomplish on their own. So um, for ADI, the request is really to continue moving up the, the stack, if you will, to be able to provide a lot more value. Um, that our customers are, are seeking. So you and I both have a long history kind of in the Galley Marsonite world. What's it like to move to the silicon world where you have all this integration capability? It's actually quite exciting. Um, as you mentioned, we, we come from the, uh, the gas world where you tend to work at a, a component level and things that you worry are, you know, the external matching components as an example, and you provide that to your customer and it's effectively you've delivered, if you will. I think what's really thrilling with working with this particular product franchise is it really extends beyond the hardware. I mean, the hardware itself is a leap in terms of the integration, the capability, the performance. So that alone, I think, would be exciting. But then when you wrap it up with firmware, software, and uh, an API that you're delivering to your customer, it's, it's actually um, quite thrilling. And so for us, completion isn't when the hardware, the eval board gets delivered, it's when the firmware goes along with it. Mm. So it's really a, a leap in terms of um, what we consider to be a product. You talked about uh, small cell as one example. You talked about uh, video for UAVs. Uh, are there Internet of Things applications where it can be applied? Absolutely, and uh, we're involved right now with, with many different companies uh, as far as helping to define and create product roadmaps for them, but things like IoT aggregators as an example, where products such as the transceivers are ideally suited, and uh, we're, we're very excited at the possibilities of what we'll be able to do in that market. It's definitely a, a growth avenue um, for us. Well, it sounds like you're at the crossroads of a, a very exciting technology and a very exciting time in the industry. Most definitely, Gary, and it's, it's just a great place to be for us right now um, with the technology that we have and the software capability to boot. So we're, I think, ready to see what the, uh, the market uh, requires and, and be prepared and, and anticipating what we can do in, by way of solutions for them. Well, we'll be watching and hope you come back and tell us about the next generation when it's ready. Thank you, Gary. I look forward to it. Thanks for joining us. Thank you.